want to address a small example now of uh, bearing monitoring uh, just to see all those components uh, in action. So we have this system, which is a motor and a gearbox uh, and has some sensors uh, on it. And we are using this measurement unit that we've seen before. And we will now uh, connect to the measurement unit and see how the setup is done for the bearing monitoring. So uh, let's go here, this one. So in channel setup, uh, as I already showed you, uh, we are uh, acquiring the data with 40 kilo samples per second. And what we do then? So we, first of all, uh, do the envelope detection. This is a math module. So it's this one. So we do envelope extraction in time domain uh, of the acceleration signal. So we, we get directly 40 kilo samples in and we get out uh, the envelope uh, enveloped signal, um, which uh, basically filters the low frequency noise and only uh, focuses on these peaks, uh, on the spikes in, uh, in time signal uh, uh, of the, the spikes have a high frequency. And then you want to see how fast these spikes actually re uh, repeat themselves. And that's how you get the bearing frequencies. Um, so this is the setup of the envelope. And then we also do the order tracking of the envelope. So uh, because we want to have uh, the data actually normalized to the RPM, uh, if it changes, we want it to stay always the same. Um, so um, if the RPM changes, we want to have the same looking FFT. That's why we use the order tracking. So we have the envelope signals, as you can see, as the inputs to the order tracking module. And we are uh, focusing, of course, on the order waterfall versus time. So we will have time updates uh, of the of the order uh, order waterfall, basically. And we have the um, key phaser channel. So we have a digital input that measures pulses from a tachometer uh, from the motor. As uh, this is our uh, phase reference, actually our RPM uh, reference. And then uh, we are also again averaging this order tracking that comes out. Um, so right here we have another average so that we are averaging order tracking over one minute. So each one minute, another order tracking FFT uh, comes out of the system. So this is how it's set up. So the order tracking uh, as an input and then averaging 60 seconds. Uh, and this means that we now finally enable uh, this order tracking average in the uh, OPC UA server. It's this one here. Basically those channels. Of course, we're also monitoring the normal vibration velocity, uh, but let's focus now on the envelope signals. And we go uh, back to measure mode here, and we go to our web clients that we haven't yet touched. So this is our uh, web client, in fact, and uh, we are monitoring this bearing here, schematically shown, and this is the envelope. But now let's look into the details of this uh, bearing. So we have uh, separate um, amplitudes of each of the bearing signatures for each uh, component. So how do we do that? If you remember, uh, looking at our report here, we have uh, four uh, characteristic lines in the FFT, uh, which is uh, this one, 97. It represents the rolling, uh, sorry, the outer race of the bearing. And then we have the 127, 157. So they are the inner race, the outer race, and the cage. And we can see that the outer race uh, vibration is the highest. So we, we need to look at this uh, especially carefully. And now we will plot the amplitude of each of those points over time to see if it's increasing uh, and uh, decreasing. So this is the web client and we, we are plotting each of the, um, of the amplitudes. As you can see, this is the outer race amplitude. This is the inner race amplitude. This is the cage and this is the rolling element. The scales are all the same. So we can see that the outer race is the highest. 
but also we can see that it is actually slowly growing. Um, so if I move this away a bit, like this, uh, you can see, um, let's zoom in into here. The orange line is just a reference. The, the orange line is the RMS vibration velocity. So this is what we get directly from the accelerometer almost without any fancy mathematics. And uh, you can see that it's just constant more or less. But looking at this um, outer race amplitude, it's slowly growing. So over the last uh, two months, this is from 22nd of January, as we are running uh, this system, uh, it's slowly increasing. And the, others, uh, they are, the other parameters are not really increasing. So this gives us some indication that uh, the outer race of the bearing uh, might slowly get damaged. So we will look now uh, through time to this, uh, this trend. And if it happens to go uh, up a lot, this, uh, this can trigger some alarms. Um, and it will be, uh, it will be interesting, interesting to see that uh, in future. So I can also show how uh, this setup is done in uh, the web client so that you get a feeling for that. Um, some of you have already created really nice dashboards in Grafana, so um, know how to work with it already. Uh, we basically need to set up the queries uh, to, the, uh, to the database. And here uh, we need to choose the, um, basically the, the, the name of the channel in the database, which is this uh, ENVOTAI average. So this is uh, average of the envelope over tracking for the AI1 channel. And then um, in this case, we want to address the 98 line of the FFT. So we, we put this in um, and then name it and then do some uh, more configuration uh, on the visualization part, so we can we can choose uh, the scaling of the y-axis and so on, um, and that's also all of course explained uh, in the manual. But uh, if you want to access only one point of the FFT, for example, in the in the uh, in the Grafana, you need to address it here, for example, under the field, uh, and without instead of the star, you need to put in the the name of this line. Um, and this, these are some tricks that you can use in Grafana to get a lot of uh, meaningful uh, data out. Of course, I mean, the aim of uh, the monitoring application team is to help you with that or even to create these applications for the end user. Uh, so depending on the project, as you already know, we try to discuss uh, which uh, approach makes uh, the most sense.